Liz Carlisle is on the line with us. She is the author of a new book, The Lentil Underground, Renegade Farmers and the Future of Food in America. Liz, welcome to the program. Thanks so much, Tom. Great to be here. Thanks for joining us. Oh, and I should add, you are the uh, uh, fellow with the Center for Diversified Farming Systems at the University of California, Berkeley. The website is lentilunderground.com. I love lentils. My favorite lentils are in the Ethiopian dish. I think it's called Yemisir Wat. It's uh, the spicy red lentils. Just that a... is my favorite lentil dish as well. No kidding. Wow. Wow. It is, it's like anybody who has not e- eaten Ethiopian food just has to get out. And, and, and lentils are wonderful. Um, why, why can, and, and, and lentils, I mean, if, well, actually, you should be giving this pitch rather than me. How is it, or why is it, that uh, uh, lentils could be a part of reforming our agricultural systems? Lentils do this wonderful thing that all leguminous plants do. They can make their own fertilizer working with bacteria. So they can take nitrogen out of the atmosphere and convert it to a plant available form, which they exude through their roots. And this can be fertilizer for the lentil plant, but then it's also left behind in the soil, a portion of it for the next plant. So it's a biological fertility system, which means you're not dependent on chemical fossil fuel based fertilizers. So is the is the big secret here that you plant that you rotate crops and you make sure that lentils or other legumes, peanuts or another one, um, are periodically planted? Yeah, exactly that. They're a great rotation crop with grains and oil seeds and and if we eat them, then we can support farmers and in including them in the rotation. Right. So uh from a consumer's point of view, and we had this interesting conversation in the previous hour about whether uh, you know our, our consumer habits was a form of voting, and I'm kind of pushing back on that idea, but it seems that if a lot of people started eating a lot more lentils and demand for lentils went up, would that change our agricultural practices? Or are there, are there farmers out there who are farming lentils with, uh, with industrial poisons? You can use herbicides with lentils, and there are um, farmers who are doing that um, in the United States and in Canada. It didn't used to be the case that there were herbicides for lentils. It used to be that our herbicides were all broadleaf generalists, and since lentils are a broadleaf, they would be killed by the herbicides. Uh, so at the beginning of this movement in the late 80s that I write about, it was it was pretty much an organic crop, and now you see it as a conventional crop as well. So is there a Roundup-ready form of lentils? <laughs> glyphosate not, tolerant? <laughs> not yet, no. Okay. Well, that's good. Uh, <laughs> Pardon but me, I, I interrupted you. you, you continue. Well, I was just going to respond to the other thing you said there, too, which is to push back on the idea that we vote with our fork. And I think it's good to push back on that idea. I don't think we vote exclusively with our fork. We also need to vote with our vote. Um, I think being an engaged eater, being an engaged food citizen is about getting engaged in food policy because you get to know about it through your eating, through getting to know farmers. But but eating alone, I don't think is going to change uh, the food system. Yeah. So you say this talks about a radical and life changing change comes to a tiny town far away from the green consumers of metropolitan markets. Um, a network of farmer scientists successfully develop a novel and sustainable cropping system. Have we just described it? Is this the essence of it? This is the essence. Yeah. Renegade farmers in Montana who didn't want to do chemical wheat monoculture and innovated an alternative. Yeah. And then this, how for now lentils aren't the only crop you can grow. How, so how does, I, I get it that lentils fix nitrogen in the soil and that the next plant you, you know, the next crop you plant is going to use that nitrogen, but how does that diminish the use of, you know, for example, you know, BT corn or, or uh, Roundup Ready soybeans or something like that? Um, wh- why would using lentils cause a farmer to start basically farming organic instead of farming chemical? Well, the big reason, you know, there are two major chemicals that people are using in Montana, herbicides and fertilizers. Mm -hmm. And if you've got legumes, if you've got lentils, you don't need to use the fertilizer. And then if you have a diversified rotation, 
you're not going to need the herbicide. You can use the plants themselves to suppress weeds. And that takes more time. That's really about building your soils over many, many years. Mm -hmm. But that's the idea of these diversified organic systems, is that if you grow the right plants that are complementary ecologically, you don't need the chemical band-aids to prop up your system. It's an ecosystem. It's a farm and it's an ecosystem. Yeah, I've read over at Carbon Underground that uh, if we were to take our industrial farming and convert it back to organic farming, which arguably it all was prior to, you know, maybe the 1940s um, uh, or the 1950s. I'm not sure when we really started with this or, or even take it back before that to no-till agriculture, that that would fix carbon in the soil as well. Now, legumes grab nitrogen out of the, out of the air and put it in the soil. But what about the carbon cycle? Yeah, absolutely. You know, that's a soil organic matter issue. So anytime you are, are tilling a crop back into the soil, anytime you're taking care of soil and paying attention to its tilth, it's going to be able to store more carbon. It's also going to be able to store more water, which is an important part of this story. This crop is more drought resilient. These farms are more drought resilient because the healthy soil has more soil water storage capacity. So if you've got a couple months when it doesn't rain, the soil can draw on its own resources. That makes absolutely perfect sense. Liz, you've written a great book. Uh, uh, Liz Carlisle is the author of Lentil Underground and a fellow at the Center for Diversified Farming Systems. The website is lentilunderground.com. Thanks for dropping by today. Thanks so much, Tom. Great talking with you.